My name is Sylvia and I was one of the first women in New Zealand to be diagnosed with the BRCA1 mutation. Most people in New Zealand today have an awareness of the BRCA1 gene mutation because of Angelina Jolie and her diagnosis several years ago. People learned that the gene does run in families and it increases your risk dramatically of breast and ovarian cancers. The function of the BRCA genes is to repair cell damage and keep breast, ovarian and other cells growing normally. Uh, when these genes contain abnormalities or mutations that are passed from either parent, the genes don't function normally and breast, ovarian and other cancer risks increase. Abnormal BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes may account for up to about 5% of all breast cancers. I myself have never had cancer, but my mother and my grandmother both died of ovarian cancer. I was tested for the gene fault in 2001 and was one of the first women in New Zealand to be offered that. Uh, I was prompted to have the test uh, as a result of a male relative who, who was part of the scientific community and had read the research that the gene was potentially linked to families and could be passed down through generations. The genetic test process involved a sample of my mother's blood and my blood test and they then would map my blood against hers to locate the BRCA1 gene fault. Getting the test and then waiting for the results was a really difficult time. Uh, they were still developing the support networks and as a result the focus was more on the result of the test and not so much the health and well-being of the woman involved. It's really heavy being told as a 30 year old that you have this hugely increased risk and you have to make decisions about getting your breasts and ovaries removed. Initially there wasn't a lot of information in New Zealand and so I chose to go online and found some American websites which were really helpful. Um, but since then the key resource in New Zealand has been the um, gift of knowledge which provides women with support and information I think it's really important as you go through the genetic testing process and then the, getting the results that you have a really strong network of people to support you. My family and friends were crucial at that time to help me through the result, the positive result of the test and then dealing with the future decisions to have surgery. After the advice from my surgeons, I went and had my family and then made the decision to have my ovaries removed and my breasts removed. Um, recovering is physically quite challenging, but um, the mental and emotional side, I think, is, is quite a hard road and can't be taken lightly. But once I was able to get my head around for me, what I was going to um, have to go through, then it's enabled me to, to be in a really good position now and feel that I've made the right decisions and at the right time for me. Well, after the ovarian surgery, you are forced into um, surgery-induced menopause. And so, you know, everybody deals with that differently and on the advice of a specialist, I chose to go on to HRT. My specialist endocrinologist gave me really good up-to-date advice on managing um, the HRT and the dosage that would really suit me as a young woman, and she was hugely helpful. Remember, inherited breast cancer is very rare and accounts for around 5% of all cases. If your grandmother or other close relative had breast cancer, this doesn't necessarily mean that you will develop the disease. If you do think that you or other family members 
are at risk of developing inherited breast cancer, have a look at our website on the link below. Here you'll learn more about the main gene mutations and the eligibility criteria for genetic testing. If you are worried, have a chat with your doctor and discuss your concerns. Now that I've had the surgeries, I feel really positive about the future and look forward to leading a really healthy, normal life.